Okay, so um, hello everyone and uh, hello to my guest Christina. And Hi. so just um, so uh, just a couple of housekeeping reminders that everyone should be muted and their video is off. We are officially recording right now and uh, we'll go um, for about 20 minutes-ish and then we have plenty of time for your questions, which I'm sure that uh, you all will have plenty of them. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, Christina is a colleague. Uh, she works here in Europe and I've um, over since, well, the last few months, I've been learning a little bit more about um, the online outreach that, um, that, um, that organizations are, are doing to help reach out to sexually exploited people. Uh, where a lot of organizations have been doing in-person outreach and um, contact, tra um, contact, contact tracing, right? Um, you know, I've got COVID on the mind, um, but also following up in person. Well, um, Christina's organization started working on this um, about a year ago. And so they already had a head start on uh, doing an online outreach. And so I invited her on. Uh, to uh, help explain more about um, how to do it and how to get started. And so I'll uh, turn it over to Christina. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for, for uh, inviting me, having me here. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, it's been such a, a trip this past year because we started before COVID and then we saw that it was, it was amazing how timing happened and we can use what the little we know to to take advantage of the fact that we can't really do much street outreach and we can actually reach out to the women online and we've discovered so much in these these past months and year this past year um the reason why we started doing it in the first place is because we we're an organization here in europe and we did street outreach we would go out um every other week we would do night outreach uh, daytime outreach and we would just go to the streets in our city and that's how we met the, the women um, but we started seeing a shift in the past three years from women from specific a specific people group from the east of Europe that we weren't seeing anymore in the streets we were only finding um, Nigerian women and we we started wondering okay what happened to them and some of them talked to us and they told us, well, you know, we've been doing online ads and we receive our clients in apartments. And so we knew that this was happening and we always kept it in the back of our mind, like, okay, we eventually we need to look into this and actually do this. So I heard from a friend in, uh, in America that was doing this type of online outreach. And I asked her, hey, what do you do? Can you help me? And they started sending me their trainings. And um, last year we decided to translate it and train people here in, in, in the city where we work. I, I'm not gonna say where I work, just you know for security reasons, but um, yeah, so in Europe. So we had to do a lot of research, find, which, find the pages where the ads are posted here in our country. And uh, after we found that, we realized that, okay, this is, this is a big need. There's so many women that are hidden from our eyes and we can actually reach you know, in this type of, this type of uh, way by calling them. So basically what, what we do is we look for their ads, get their information, and then we call them. And these are women that most of the time they, they put their ads personally, but other times, especially the younger ones, we found that their ads are put on by someone else. So they have to pay someone to take care of the ads and everything that entails. And uh, the ads are very explicit. I think it's, it's been harder for my team to actually do call outreach, like the phone calls, than to actually do in-person outreach because you're not seeing the person, how they react. And what you read on the ads is just so graphic. And we, we, try, we cover the pictures. We don't see the pictures. There's a way you can cover it with, with, a, with a computer. But even what we read is so graphic that it becomes really difficult um so so yeah so it's been it's been quite an interesting learning experience and um we've, we've also realized and we've read studies that have been done by the european commission that a lot of these women that have ads online 
there's different ads for different women, but there's one phone number for all of them. So we realized, and we've seen it happen even, even two weeks ago, we had two women from two different parts of the world, two different countries, but one phone number. So we are seeing this happen and it, it shows us that there's actually an organization behind it. Um, it's not just them by themselves. And so there, this is just a quick one-on-one -on, -one on how to do online outreach. Of course, it's not super uh, profound. You know, you can, you can contact me later if you want more information, but I created a sheet that I gave to Catherine as a basic training on how to start. So I would say that what you need first is a team. We already had a team. We had a team that has gone through trauma-informed care trainings. They have gone through how to talk to, how to work with uh, victims of sexual exploitation. So they have the experience. But if you don't have that, I would totally recommend that first you get a team together that's interested, passionate about this, but also that would get training, trauma-informed care training, because it's so important to know that when you work with these women, they come from a from trauma, from a background that is very difficult to understand. And so it helps you have a conversation with them. Um, so you need to get a training and then you need some instruments. So what we recommend is that you have a computer that's dedicated only for this. So it wouldn't be your personal computer, but a computer that's dedicated to the organization, to the team, or we have a ministry and we're actually part of a church, but we've had a computer that we use only for us so that's what we started using you also need a phone uh, like an actual device and a phone number a sim card that's dedicated to this and it's under if possible the organization's name that's what we have here as well um, we need um, wi-fi of course you need internet to do the research you need and you actually i forgot to mention when in other countries not in in the country where i am in europe but for example in the united states some teams use Google Voice. If you create an account with Google Voice, you can actually uh, call through Google Voice. And I, I believe it creates a specific number and many people can use the same account at the same time. So if you have different teams, they can do different calls at the same time. Uh, this is for bigger groups, but it works really well. And I believe in America, it's free. Um, here it, where I am, it, it's not available. So we couldn't do that. Um, you obviously need an antivirus. I, I mentioned two of them that were given to me by someone who's very involved in, in cyber security. And you need a USB to store the information. Uh, another thing is as a browser, we recommend that you use Tor. It's a system, a browser system that you can download for free and it's, it's very, very safe. It's much safer than anything else, than Google Chrome or anything else. So we've been using Tor. Again, I, this is all written down in the page. And um, you just need to know that you can disclose your name and last name, only just your name. You can disclose your specific location and to keep your team secure it, by doing this in a separate computer and a separate phone, you also should have um, per se an office or a neutral place that you should do it at. Of course, now with COVID restrictions, this, this might be different and we have done it from home. So. During the lockdown, we, I, I contacted the women from my house, but I had a Zoom call with the team so that they would all be present. And, um, but of course, if you don't have restrictions, you can do it from a neutral place. And when the women want to meet, we recommend that you meet at a day, daytime, not a nighttime. And you, you can go with uh, another person, so you shouldn't go alone and go to a public place. That's what we recommend for the first time you meet a woman. Um, of course, we also recommend that you keep the women's information confidential. Only the team that is part of this outreach should, should have this information and you shouldn't share it outside of the group or through social media. Um, we're very careful about that. So, so that's important to, to keep in mind. Um, I did write down a conversation guide or like tips for how to talk to them. And what we have is a script. We do have a specific script that we always have in front of us when we call. Uh, we call the women, we put it on speaker, and then we, the rest of the team is listening in and we, one of us talks. And um, there's a script and we just follow it. But of course, after that, you have to improvise the, according to how the conversation goes. But basically what you say is, hi, I saw your ad online. 
My name is Christina. I work with blah, blah, blah. You know, we offer support to women and, you know, can you talk? Something very simple. And with the time, with the experience that we've had, we realized that it's important to tell them from the first moment that you got their number from an ad online. Because we didn't used to say that before. We were like, we were just like, hi, I'm Christina. Uh, how are you? But they're like, how did you get my number? A lot of them didn't even know their ad was online. And that was surprising. Mm. Catherine, feel free to wow. interrupt me and ask yeah, me questions. No, that's great. Right. Yeah, so uh, other times they're like, why, why are you calling me? What do you want from me? Do you want to sell something? You know, because they're not used to someone calling them if it's not for work. So that was interesting. We've learned with time that we have to be very clear about who we are and, you know, speak slowly. <laughs> I speak very fast, as you can tell. So I had to change that. Um, we really... Uh, we really, we're really careful about not using the word help, but using the word support, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. in this, in, even though these women mo most probably have been exploited and some of them are there by force, you know, like they really don't want to do this. When you use the word help, it kind of creates a barrier between you and the woman. So you want to be there to walk alongside of them, to support them. And just, you just say, Hey, we offer support. We can all, we also say sometimes um, we can help, we can support you, sorry, <laughs> with social, with social services or going to a doctor or with uh, your documents, you know, we can support you with this part of, of life. We, and we say, we know life is very difficult. Um, and so we just want to be here for you. We just want to be there for, for women. Um, so that's one thing that the help word that we, we really don't, we don't use. We try the best we can to not use it. Uh, we want to empower them. We want to encourage them. We want to just say, just be interested in them. You know, how are you? How, how, how's everything? And I, I did write some open my, sorry, open-ended questions, you know, like, hi, would you mind talking about this? Or thank you for your time. And then you see what they respond or how do you feel about and with COVID, it's actually been way easier to talk to them mm -hmm. because we ask, hey, we just want to know how you're doing with this pandemic. How are you coping with this? How are you dealing with this? Um, is there anything that's changed? And they really talk. They open up. Most of them really open up. Um, we also want to be really careful to listen. We want to just give them space to talk and not interrupt and just not sound judgmental at, at all. And one of the reasons why as a team here, we decided not to look at their pictures was because we didn't wanna judge them from the pictures we saw. We did begin by seeing the pictures and we would, uh, actually I know another team that takes a screenshot of their face so that they could see their face. Mm -hmm. And it's nice, you know, you wanna see their face so you know who you're talking to. But at the same time, what we found was that we couldn't just see the face, we saw everything else and it just, gave us an idea of her that of something that she, you know we don't want to we don't want to judge her for that's right so we decided not to look at the pictures yeah. that's why you, you you can still personalize it um and have a connection with the person without seeing all the other um other things yeah exactly yeah that's yeah. that's the reason why we we did one outreach with pictures and then we're like you know what this is not necessary yeah let's just go without it and it made our life better too because yeah. when you see that it's it's like watching porn yeah well, it so is. of exactly. course you know yeah. if it's it's very you know we're sensitive to anyone is yeah. sensitive to this so i and another thing i didn't mention is when i do the research i do it with someone else i'm never alone when i do research when i go on these pages and the type of pages that i'm talking about is pages that are called meeting meeting spaces like you know where a man wants to meet a woman yeah or a woman meets a woman or you know they have different um options yeah so um we choose the man that wants to meet the woman and then we go to our city and that's where we see all the ads and there's so many ads you click on one and by the time you go back to the main page you see 10 new ones in like 10 seconds i don't mm -hmm. even know like they just keep coming up and up and up and so yeah. um th there's so many women we realize that it's just it's it's a whole nother world from the street outreach compared to street outreach we found a lot of women from countries that we had never met before in the streets. Uh, for example, Asian women, we never saw them in the streets. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. we, we've seen a lot of Asian women, Hispanic women, Latinas. Uh, I speak Spanish, so that helps because it opens the door right away. And we have another team member who speaks Portuguese. And we've honestly found the majority to be Latinas or, or Brazilian. Wow. We found a lot of South American, you know, Caribbean women, um, Brazilian, Asian, and some Eastern Europeans. So that's mostly what we see here. Um, the, the hardest ones to speak to are the Asians because they don't speak any, any language that we know. They don't speak English, Spanish, Italian, German. I'm telling all the languages that, you know, that we could get access to Portuguese. No, they don't. So, so they're just like, I don't understand. They say it in, in our language. Oh, I don't understand. But then that's it. It can't go anywhere because they really can't understand what we're saying. And we try, we send them text messages too. So we also have a script for text messages. If in case the girl doesn't answer or they, she just hangs up the phone, we just send a text message. So um, this comes with what to expect. Um, mm. I, would, I wrote some of, some of the things that you might receive from a call and it's surprising because some days when we call, we, everyone hangs up the phone. Some days when we call, we have like great conversations. Mm. To, last week or no, two weeks ago, we had an outreach and out of 17 women we called, we were able to have long conversations with like nine. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Usually we get good conversations with two or three. Uh, and I think also because of COVID, women are more receptive now. Mm. There's just been such a change and everyone is in, in such a panic in a way that, yeah. that they're really thinking about how can my life change? And, you know, like they're realizing that, that, they're, that they, they can do something else, hopefully, you know. So what to expect? Some women hang up right away. Like I said, we send a text message to them. Usually uh, some are confused. Like I said earlier, um, another reason why they're confused. Let's say we, we say that we're from a Christian organization. So we say right away that, you know, we're, we're from a church basically. And they're like, why would a church want to talk to me? Like, why would a church log into the pages where my ads are located? You know, and they're very surprised, but in a good way. And mm. so this shows them like that, that there's people that love them and that are here for them. Um, some of them, one woman told me like, we are the last people that someone would want to talk to. Why would you call me? Like, why would you want to hear from me and know about me? And that also shows a lot of love. The fact that we take time to, to call them. Um, some start telling their whole stories right away. Mm. And they're like, yeah, this is who I am. This is where I'm from. Some just tell us about their families and how long they've been here. Uh, some actually want to meet. We called a woman and three days later, we met up with her and her and her coworker uh, because they had a specific need. So, mm-hmm. you know, it just it's yeah. just been amazing. We've discovered so much and we're still discovering a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's basically what what we've lived here. I'm sure. If you have questions, I would be happy to answer. I try to kind of tell you the specific, you know, the most important yeah. things of what I've learned, but yeah, so much to it. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it, there's yeah, of course, there's a lot to it. But I, I, I want people to understand that this is something that's really important, and and as you have demonstrated that once you get started, you're discovering so many more women, so many different avenues, and so many more people that you never would have discovered just walking the streets and yes it's definitely hard um so can i ask a i'm gonna ask a couple questions here to get started and i think um just while we're still recording and then i'll open it up for um the rest of um our participants um but back to some of um sort of what you need do you use like a virtual private network like a vpn to mask your ipn um, to, so that can't be traced back. Is that something that you also recommend? Yes, that's something I recommend though. I haven't set up because, uh, we haven't really, just to be honest, we haven't really taken the time to set up that besides everything else that we've set up. But what I've understood is Tor, the, the, um, the search engine actually helps you because it changes the, I'm not good with yeah. technical words. It, okay, it changes the it changes the IP the the address back. It, so it it, yeah. it it's changing um, the trace harder, back. Yeah, yeah, the connections. Trace. Yeah, so it's yeah. harder to trace back to us. So we've 
we ha we have to do that actually the VPN yeah. but we haven't done it but I'm I'm sure there's um there's a there's a page that George created you, you yep you yep yep and he tells all about that yep yes he does <laughs> and and I I just want to tell everyone that that's um another colleague of ours in Europe um, in another country is really an expert on these kinds of things. So I want to encourage you, you don't have to be a tech expert to set this up. Um, there's people around that will help that have will help give guidance like um, our colleague George. And um, I can share it. He has a very technical handout um, that details a lot of these things and it blows my mind when I read it. But um, yeah, it's very helpful. And um, yeah, good. So um, another question. So I want to ask, have you, um, is there been a time when you've kind of run into trouble or sort of like, can you give a, an example of maybe what not to do or learning the hard way or something? Um, yeah, like Trouble, trouble per se, we haven't. Yeah, thankfully. okay, good. But That's we, good. We have learned different things. <laughs> One thing is we, we first started with our script by asking them, are you so-and-so? Because we would see their name. Mm -hmm. And we had so much trouble with that at first, the first two weeks, because a lot of the women, especially the Asian or, you know, I don't know, other women in general, they were very much like, why are you asking me my name? Mm -hmm. what, why do you care? Like, who are you? They were very taken aback by the fact, by the fact that we were, we knew our, their name, but it's not their real name. What, what we found yeah. is not their real name, but still, you know, the name they use yeah. it is. And uh, a lot of ads don't have names. So we just realized, okay, it's just better to take that out of the script. Mm -hmm. Don't ask their names, just say who you are and see if they want to talk. And then as you talk, you can ask, oh, sorry, I didn't get your name. What's your name? So even if we have their name because it's on their ad, we just don't ask and we just say, can I get your name? Just if the conversation goes along. Um, another thing is the whole the whole online ad uh, at the, um, topic. Like we started saying at first, we didn't say where we found their number and they were very confused as well. So we, we just say from the beginning, hi, I saw your ad online. Mm -hmm. So I would say just be very honest yeah. with who you are, what you want to do, and yeah. that you know what they're doing. Because yeah. sometimes they want to cover it. They don't want to accept it, you know, because you're on the phone. Yeah. You're not with them in the street, so it's different. Um, trouble? No, we haven't okay. really seen anything good. like that happen. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. And um, without getting into too many technical weeds, um, I'm assuming there's a technical way to hide the photos um, so you're not yeah. exposing yourself to um, all the graphic images and the explicit yeah. images. So before I used Tor, because George is the one that, that gave us a training on cybersecurity, but I received this training during the lockdown and we had already yeah. been doing outreach before. So we weren't as safe <laughs> and I was using Google Chrome, but, yeah. um, but I was using an image blocker ad that you, an add-on that you put mm -hmm. on, on Google Chrome. And so you can just look it up it's called image blocker in Google Chrome and you set it up and you, um, you enable it when you do the research and then you take it away after if you don't, you okay. know, just for when you do research, you don't see the pictures. But with using Tor, there's actually uh, in the settings for Tor, there's an option and it's the safest option. And so you choose that and that way the pictures are blocked. Okay. Yeah. And wow. just, uh, actually, just to be honest, recently we I used the safest option, but nothing the ad in, the ad per se wasn't coming out. So we we ended up taking that out, and we just used a piece of paper. And, yeah. <laughs> and while one of us will scroll, we would like, cover the picture with a piece of paper. So that's very simple. You can do that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little awkward, but that but that works. And. Um... <laughs> So, Christine, I'd like you to share a story that kind of brings um, the humanity um, to this, because you, you've already mentioned that about how we can, uh, we need to make contact and, uh, you know, protecting the screen of people. So we're not seeing the pictures, but um, when you do have opportunities sometimes of um, meeting these people in, in particular. So can you tell a relatable story about that? Yeah, yeah. Um... I actually just yesterday I met um, I met this woman face to face for the fir first time. I had been talking to her after our 
outreach. We had been contacting each other through the phone and talking and she just wanted to, to meet up and she came and she told me, oh, I'm so embarrassed to, to meet you face to face that, you know, to see that, to know that you saw me in those ads. And I told her, I just want you to know that I didn't see your picture. I covered your pictures. No one saw your picture. No one from the team that was there saw your picture. They don't know how you, how you look. And I didn't know how you looked even before I met you today. So I reassured her that what I was looking at her for the first time mm. yesterday when I met her face to face. And that's why I think it's also very beautiful to, to protect and, you know, the pictures to cover them because it also doesn't give you a view of someone that's not really who they are. <laughs> That's true. That's not who they are. And you can honestly see them and you can say when you meet them in person that you can honestly say that, you know, I only saw and or maybe you saw only their face or something like that. or You didn't see the picture, but now you're seeing them as as they really are. You mm -hmm. know? And that's that's a precious and beautiful story. Um, I really like that. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm sure you have many more uh, to share and but who will have time for that, but maybe we'll have you on again um, in the future. So thank you All for right. having me. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Good no, yeah, no, I, I think this is a very, very good overview. And, and like I said, um, uh, the handout that Christina's um, prepared um, is in PDF and so is George's handout about the technical aspects and I'll make that available to you. It's, um, not, it's not a link to, sh I can uh, put that in the uh, show notes um, during our uh, discussion time. And uh, so I'm going to uh, close out the video and we're going to have time for your questions. So let me.